Hey everybody, I have a unique Mike Donlin pickup to show today, uh, but first I wanted to talk about all his three cards in the set and then go into kind of who he was as a player. So I'll talk about the cards in order of scarcity. This is in the mid 300s as far as the scarcity rankings go out of the, out of the 524, so a very nice looking card with the exception of his hands. Seems like the artist ran out of time because the likeness, it, they, the artist was talented. You can see in the, the face and, and the way the uniform was drawn, but it's like they just ran out of time. So uh, that's cards in a four. And a Piedmont 150 back. Next up, this card's in the 320s. So again, not the toughest, but far from the easiest cards. It's also a unique card in the giant set with the color of the background. A lot of the cards in the giant set are either a solid color background or it has kind of a more natural blue sky look. So I also really like the pop collar. Uh, knowing what I know about Donlin now, it definitely seems like something you would do. Uh, very cool looking card. 350, factory 30. So that's in a four and a half. And then the last card is uh, one of the toughest cards in the set in general. It's ranked uh, number 26 on the scarcity list out of the 524. So very, very tough card. One of the toughest in the Giants team set. It's a 150 series only, so only printed in 150 backs, which is why it's so tough. So this is probably one of the better deals I've ever gotten on eBay. Uh, back at my old job when I would start at 4 in the mornings on Sundays, uh, I... Just happened to check eBay in a little break I had and saw this one get posted up. So on a buy it now, I got it for about half of market. So I really love this card and I'm happy I, I have such a nice copy. So very happy to have that one. Now I'll kind of get into some information about Donlin. Uh, Mike Donlin was one of the most charismatic players of his day and was well loved by fans. He had a lot of flair and was known as Turkey because of the way he ran, and he had apparently a very red neck. So, yeah, he wasn't too happy about that nickname, but it stuck after all these years. So, in addition to that, Mike Donlin was a very talented hitter. He had a lifetime batting average of 333 and a slugging percentage of 468. That slugging percentage is very comparable to the top hitters of his era. Uh, but but despite his natural ability and his popularity as a player, baseball was always secondary to Donlin. He was kept off the field because of a drinking problem and when he became an actor in vaudeville. So Donlin only played in over 100 games in a season three times out of the 12 seasons he appeared in. And he even missed entire seasons at a time because of his acting. On the few occasions he truly dedicated himself to baseball, he played like a Hall of Fame player, and which leads to him being one of the biggest what-ifs, what-if players of the era. Uh, he really could have been a Hall of Famer, but just couldn't stay focused on baseball. So uh, he, he had some truly incredible seasons. And um, now that we've gone over that, I just wanted to show this off. This was distributed by the International News Service. I'm not quite sure how it was given out, but it looks similar to things that were included in newspapers and, and things like that. So whatever it is, uh, Mike Donlan had these around to give out to people that requested an autograph. This autograph is a facsimile. I've found one other example of this with the facsimile and one without it. Uh, I will include a picture of the one without the uh, tracing on it. So this one has been traced over in the same pen that was used for the inscription. So I choose to believe that Donlin filled in the uh, faded spots. So you can see the green there, here, and those spots. So uh, I'm thinking that when Donlin sent this out, he did this inscription and then just filled in the spot. So while this is not a full signature, it, it definitely is a partial. So this is in his hand, though. Very distinctive T, and Donlin was known to use green ink, much like Ty Cobb. So it says, to Wally, just a good 
big soldier or sailor, I think. Yeah, sailor. So 5526. Very, very cool piece. Uh, Donlin died in 1933 from a heart attack. So his signature is very tough. The one auction result I found, it showed that it sold for $900. So I won't be adding an example of his, a real example of his autograph anytime soon. So this is about as good as it gets for, I think it was about $45. So I'll definitely take that over spending $900 on a little cut autograph. Uh, anyways, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Let me know which one of the three cards is your favorite. And if you would consider this, um, even close to like a partial autograph or not. So, uh, like I said, I'll include a couple photos of some of the evidence I have of this being legitimate. And, uh, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.